There you go. <laughs> Take it away. All right. Awesome. I'm just going to hit full screen on this presentation. Can, can you all see my screen all right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take that as yes. Awesome. Perfect. All right. And I, I cannot see the chat super well while I am in present mode. So Casey, if you wouldn't mind just kind of monitoring any questions that might come up um, and then just like unmuting and sharing those as they come, I would really appreciate that. Feel free to interrupt me at any time. And same goes to both of our attendees. Um, at any time, you can just unmute yourself or raise your hand um, and Casey can help me see when that happens. Sounds good. Um, all right, so today um, we're going to be talking about getting into Wikipedia as an editor, um, but also just simple ways that you can use Wikipedia for social action, um, which isn't something that we typically think about when we're talking about Wikipedia. So it's something I'm really excited to, to share with you all. And just as a little bit of background um, for myself, my name is Eliza Cross. My pronouns are she, her, and they, them. Um, I'm currently a senior here at Agnes, and this past summer I had a really awesome opportunity to intern at the McKean Library, and um, part of my professional development during this experience was this really amazing opportunity offered by WikiEDU, um, which was a course called um, LGBTQ plus Wiki Scholars, and this was an opportunity forwarded to me by my supervisor Casey, who is here with us today. Um, and basically, it was a project for people to become Wikipedia editors, and it was a really long course. We, get, we went super into depth on, on all this, the kind of behind the scenes work in Wikipedia, and it just really opened my eyes to how much goes into creating um, Wikipedia as a, a source for information, and also the type of really cool scholarship and activism that's happening behind the scenes. So. I'm just going to go ahead and move right into what we're talking about today. And this is something where I would really be interested to hear from you all, um, because I have my own ideas about why Wikipedia is important and how, you know, how it's a valuable research tool. Um, but I'm really curious to hear from especially other students on how maybe Wikipedia has impacted their, their life as a student or why they think that it's important. So feel free to unmute yourself or just jump in the chat with any ideas you have. I use the Wikipedia sources a lot for my research. Awesome, me too. I think those resources are one of the most valuable tools that Wikipedia has to offer. I love that. Um, yeah, else? I, yeah, I feel like Wikipedia has like, uh, is really accessible and really easy to um, use if you have access to the internet so that's why it is important totally um the accessibility is something that wikipedia really strives at um is trying to make sure that people from all over the world and all different languages um and all different like kind of reading comprehension levels too is able are able to access the information that's available there and also the fact that it's free is huge um it doesn't have any paywalls there's no membership fees or anything. Um, there's just an abundance of information that's freely available. Another cool thing about Wikipedia to me is the fact that it is collaborative. So there's no central um, organization that has that might have its own agenda um, in creating the content. It is in fact entirely user driven. So anyone can become an editor and contribute to it, which is a really cool idea because it's like a collective way of compiling and then distributing information. Any other ideas before we move on about why Wikipedia is useful or meaningful to you? They can be updated quite often. Yeah, it's super flexible. And the minute something happens in the news or anything changes, you can count on Wikipedia editors to be on the ball and on top of updating those pages. All right, cool. I think we can move ahead to the next um, slide, which is I'm hoping to kind of address some of the issues that Wikipedia has. Well, it is a super important um, resource in making information accessible. Um, it does have a lot of issues. And before I kind of go into 
my thoughts on what some of those issues might be. I, again, am curious to hear from you about what are some of the obstacles that you've run into when using Wikipedia or what do you think might be some of like maybe more of the underlying systemic issues with the way that knowledge is collected and distributed with Wikipedia? Um, so one thing I know is that like anybody, if you make an account, you can technically edit a Wikipedia page, but I feel like they counter this by like, they have a lot of hires, I mean, not hires, editors on standby who will like go in and like take out all of that stuff, but it's still like a hassle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one really important thing you brought up is like people who specifically make a point of going in and like undoing some of the progress that is made on Wikipedia in certain areas. Um, so yes, that is, a, that is a big issue that is a part of it being so open and being so collaborative is the fact that anyone can change it um, according to their own views and opinions. Um, the nice thing that I learned while in the Wikipedia course is that there are a lot of filters put in place to monitor a lot of these, um, this activity. Um, so people who, you know, go and spam on pages or who make edits that are like inaccurate or just playing up to like whatever agenda that they, that they want is um, that there are monitors and there are people whose job it is to go and look through all the, the edits that are coming in, um, check on people people's reports. Um, so luckily there is a, a fairly large and effective kind of filter net that, that catches that type of activity. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of it does slip through, especially on pages that are not as high traffic or notable um, on Wikipedia. So I'm just gonna flip to, um, Oopsie. Let me go back one. Okay, so one of the the main issues with Wikipedia, and this is something that um, we were just talking about, is kind of how it basically is a massive um, collection of whoever whoever um, added to it. So essentially, it reflects its contributors more than its users. Um, so whoever whoever's editing, whoever's actively putting content in has control over, over what is shown on Wikipedia. And so um, if, we, if we trace this system back in time, where did Wikipedia start? Then this is, this is one of the core issues I think with, with Wikipedia is that um, it was founded upon these ideals very prominent within um, colonialism, which is the encyclopedia system of collecting knowledge and classifying it into very hierarchical structures. Um, and oftentimes this type of kind of elite academic work would cater most towards white um, capitalist and imperialistic interests, as you can probably imagine. Um, and so because it was, was based on that type of framework to begin with, it still has its roots and a lot of a lot of the way that it operates um, still reflects that. So that's an issue that is being worked on a lot um, by editors today is kind of decolonizing Wikipedia. And we're going to talk more about that later. Um, but that is one of the major issues that it that it carries. Um, another one that goes along with that is is kind of its systems put in place for objectivity, um, which is <laughs> which is an idea that carries a lot of problems with it as well. Um, the system's put in place for like notability. So basically what is allowed to be a page on Wikipedia, what is allowed to be covered um, and get its own, you know, articles. Um, and also the sources that are allowed to be used um, inherently favor, um, inherently favor certain demographics and exclude others. So, so in other words, um, the types of, of people that get covered on Wikipedia, the types of sources that are allowed to be used, um, they neglect certain populations like lower class populations, you know, um, people who don't have access to academia and all the resources that that offers. So oftentimes like the types of sources you can use are things that have to be peer reviewed, um, kind of scholarship, 
things that are seen as being notable in kind of this mainstream um, arena in academia. And that leaves out a lot of um, like oral knowledge systems, a lot of um, indigenous knowledge systems. Um, it leaves out people in areas that cannot access like the internet obviously and cannot um, access like their work getting published so there are a lot of of obstacles there for um certain demographics and people to get the coverage that they deserve on wikipedia um and then this interesting statistic on the right hand side of the screen um as of 2018 white european and american men provided 80 percent of wikipedia content only 10 percent of wiki authors were women um, so that is just, I think, a very um, interesting insight into kind of who's making Wikipedia and, and how that um, directly impacts what we see and what is represented on Wikipedia. So any, any thoughts here um, at this point about any other issues that you thought that I didn't necessarily cover um, that you think might be worth pointing out? Um, I just thought it was really interesting because it's like um, to be to provide Wikipedia with the content you have to like it's a volunteer position like I, I don't believe exactly. you do. Yeah, you don't get paid. So it's just I wonder why the statistics are like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like who has the kind of time, you know, the, the privilege of just sitting around and editing Wikipedia pages, you know, it, it that right there excludes a vast portion of the population who are working class who don't have time or access to that kind of of hobby, essentially, because it is for many people on um, something they do in their free time. Yeah, and it also, few people get paid through Wikipedia. Yeah, it also I, what I love about that point that you just made is that um, it's also about people, the burden being placed on the underrepresented, um, unless other people step up, recognize that this is a problem and want to do something about it um, and take the time to do the research and add the contribution, um, those voices probably won't be there because those individuals, it sh they have so much already to be dealing with themselves. Um, it shouldn't be yeah. just the burden on whatever groups are underrepresented. Yeah, that's a really good point. And it brings to mind the question of like, who are we expecting to do the labor of providing coverage for certain groups and certain people? Um, so thank you for bringing those points up, all of you who participated. Um, so I'm just going to move into ways that we can contribute where we are now. Um, and since I'm, I'm a student myself and um, I'm talking to other students, um, I thought it would be best to focus on ways that are really time effective, that don't require a ton of training to do. Um, and so I've kind of narrowed it down to five easy things that you can, that you can do to help create change within Wikipedia and generally make it a more accessible and safe space for its users. So the introductory step that um, you'll take if you want to contribute to Wikipedia is becoming an editor. And while that sounds like a big deal, um, it's honestly as simple as just like making a free account and making your first edit, which can be as simple as changing a spelling error, fixing grammar, adding a citation. This is like something you can do in like 30 seconds, a small little thing. Um, and you're a Wikipedia editor and you'll have a free account. You can use any time. Um, you can let your account remain anonymous, which is nice for, especially if you're using your Wikipedia account to do the type of work that, um, that might get you recognized by the, the wrong types of people, if that makes sense. So if you're putting yourself out there and trying to create change on behalf of a population that you represent or another population that's underrepresented on Wikipedia, um, it's just nice to know that Wikipedia 
has layers of protection built in for its users so that you don't have to offer up your identity to anyone without your consent. Um, and I another just, cool thing. I just oh, want to let you ahead. know that uh, Amina is actually a Wikipedia editor. Awesome. That's super cool. You probably know more than me because I'm very new to this. <laughs> so I'd love to hear more from you anytime you want to share. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that is super cool about editing Wikipedia, like we mentioned before, is open to everyone. So you don't have to have any special qualifications to become a Wikipedia editor. Um, you can just start anytime you want. And there are infinitely many ways you can contribute to Wikipedia. Um, I'm not going to go into depth in all of those. Like I said before, I'm just going to focus on five easy methods that have a low effort. They're really easy to do. You can spend as little or as much time as you want doing them, um, but they do have a relatively high impact for the amount of work that it takes to do them. All right. so. Number one that I've decided to highlight here is updating language. As we all know, language carries so much power. Um, the types of language that we use um, directly impacts the type of like power dynamics that are at play, um, the types of voices that are being um, promoted and voices that are being silenced. So language is very, is very powerful. Um, one easy way you can work with language on Wikipedia is with pronouns and dead names. And so here on the right, you see um, a really well-developed Wikipedia page. This is just like part of the lead paragraph for Elliot Page, who you may be familiar with. Um, he's one of my favorite actors. And he recently came out as transgender. And um, in the, almost immediately after this, Wikipedians went onto his profile and updated all his pronouns and updated his um, his name. As you can see, um, they still acknowledge his former name. This is something that he himself was comfortable with because, especially as like a famous person, um, people who are trying to find information about him and may not necessarily know that he came out as trans would still be googling his original given name, and so they have you know provided that link for, for people to be redirected to um, his new name, which is helpful, but also sometimes um, depending on the situation, depending on the person, um, not everyone is comfortable with their previous name being shared on such a public platform. And so um, what well, an easy thing that we can do as editors is go into people's profiles, especially people who are not as highly known as as people like Elliot Page. Um, so maybe people that you might know, maybe like artists you follow or activists you're aware of, um, maybe people who don't have as many, have, have as much traffic on their pages and people constantly coming in and updating things for them. So you can go and find their pages and just make sure that their pronouns are up to date, um, make sure that their, their dead names are removed if that's something that um, they've expressed, you know, concern about in their, on their social media or something like that. Um, so something that's really important with, with pronouns and dead name usage on Wikipedia um, is that you are maintaining respect and, um, and also just like staying up to date on what the person themselves has publicly identified themselves as. You never want to publicly out someone if they haven't themselves done that yet, if, if they haven't, um, announced it on their own terms, even if like an external source, like a, a news or press outlet has um, announced that someone is transgender or has, you know, undergone some sort of transition, um, unless the person themselves and you have like up to date information with good sources that they are currently identifying as that way, you, you should not um, put that information on a public platform. So just a simple thing that you can do um, to make sure that Wikipedia is being respectful of people is checking for pronoun usage and, and name usage. All right, so another one that, oops, I keep doing that. <laughs> okay, so another thing that goes along with language is with indigenous names. Um, so this just goes along with kind of broader efforts that are being undertaken to decolonize Wikipedia. Um, is normalizing the use of native names, especially for places. 
So something that we were talking a lot about in my um, editing course is place names for um, for situations where um, a name of a place might be one thing for um, for settlers who live there for for the white non-native population, um, but it might be another name for the indigenous people who are there. And so then you have this question of, well, what do we call on Wikipedia? What is like respectful? What will help people understand um, and find this page even? And so there's sometimes debate around, is it appropriate to like even replace um, the colonial name for a place with its original name? Um, and there's honestly like arguments about this on so many Wikipedia talk pages, um, but if this is a collective movement, if we normalize this together and just add even in just a parentheses to the side of a place or um, add it somewhere like in this Wikipedia article about Utah, even if you just acknowledge it in its own paragraph talking about the etymology, like the native etymology of the place, um, that's a good step in the right direction. The more people do it, the less people can argue about it. Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on with language is um, thinking about access in language. So one of the main ideas for Wikipedia is that it should be accessible for people um, regardless of their education levels, like kind of assuming that someone may not be familiar with maybe some of the more academic vernacular when talking about things. And so in most places I've seen Wikipedia pages, especially if they're like really mainstream topics, it's it's really good about you know being kept like an introductory level, being really simple and understandable. But I've noticed in some like especially in like the sciences or like um, kind of more academic topics, you have editors who are like PhDs in their field, and um, oh, we have someone else in the waiting room. Just admit them. Welcome. Um, to who just joined. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so what we're talking about right now is access with language in Wikipedia. So a lot of times um, in some of these more academic topics, you have these editors who are just so knowledgeable and they're used to talking in like really scholarly terms. And so they'll go and they'll write all this content that they're experts on. Um, but then the rest of us are like, what are you talking about? And so for example, this article about climate justice, um, this lead section at the top is like pretty good, but the farther down you go in the article, and I haven't included that in a screenshot here, but the farther down you go, the more like scientific the terminology gets and the more people are excluded from the conversation. And so something that you can do really easily is just go into articles in edit mode and find ways that you can just fix, even if it's just one or two words, just changing it so that it makes it more understandable for more people. And that really um, opens up access for folks using Wikipedia. Okay. So the next method I wanna talk about is connecting concepts. Um, Wikipedia is great usually at linking concepts together. We always joke about like <laughs> falling down a rabbit hole on Wikipedia just because it's so good at like drawing your interest to the next topic and you know you want to follow the links from article to article. And that's part of the magic of Wikipedia is that it's so easy to learn about so many things like very quickly and get from one place to the other very quickly. Um, but again, there's still progress to be made in this area. So something that you can do on Wikipedia is contributing to lists and categories. These are one of my favorite features on Wikipedia. And I'm sure that many of you have come across this like while you're working on a paper or a research project. Um, one example that comes to my mind is uh, I'm an art student. And so recently I was doing a research project on indigenous artists in the Americas, like contemporary indigenous artists. And I was using Wikipedia's page because they have like lists of indigenous artists and like lists of contemporary artists and lists of artists who work with environmental issues. And so those are just like super useful tools for getting started exploring a concept. But 
Um, these are entirely dependent on the people who actually think to take the time to like put somebody's page on a list and it doesn't always get updated super often. And so another easy thing that you can do to help, especially underrepresented um, people to get coverage that they deserve is to add them to lists. And you have categories, which are these big pages of just like, the example at the top is like transgender artists. Um, you have all these pages listed below that in an alphabetical um, collection. And there's also list pages, which an example is below. Um, where you have kind of an article describing an overview of the topic, and then you have below that um, a long list of different pages. And so um, the article that I was working on in my Wikipedia course was um, actually created, I'm it's still an under progress, it's not published yet, but I'm creating um, an article about a young um, Black transgender artist who their, their race and their transgender identity is a, is a major component to their work. And they recently had a New York Times article come out about them. So that gave me the, the source that I needed, you know, that was like notable enough in Wikipedia's eyes to um, get them their own page. And so I've been working on their page and I just think I'm really excited to put them on some of these lists. So like putting them on the list of transgender artists, putting them on the list of like African-American artists, putting them on the list of like, multimedia and performance artists, because that way more people will find their work when they're looking through these lists for what they're, they're looking for. Um, and I also just think it would be really like happy for this person for when they have that moment of realizing like, hey, I have a Wikipedia page, like, wow, I'm on all these lists now. And so that's just really special to think about um, how you're directly impacting someone by just adding them to a page um, or adding them to a list. All right. Um, one other thing is with, with connecting ideas is linking articles. And so this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, where you have all these amazing links that are like the blue text within Wikipedia. And it's like, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm like scrolling through Wikipedia on my phone, I'm always like clicking on these, I'm like opening them in new tabs until I have like a billion of them open because I'm just so curious about so many things. And these are just, a, these are a really effective method to make information accessible and to kind of facilitate like the organic um, exploration of ideas. And so an easy action item here is to find articles that are lacking in links and add them in. And so here's an example of an article that's doing really well with links here on um, this article about ableism, but um, there's so many articles out there where it's like, there's none of that blue text, it's just all um, just, you know, the black text. And so you can find those, go in and see what you can link. And it's super easy to add links in Wikipedia. You can even just highlight the word um, or type in a word in the article and it will like come up with the Wikipedia page link to it automatically. So super easy, really low effort to do that. All right, so number three um, way that you can contribute to Wikipedia super easily is by improving sources. As we know, sources are a huge component of what makes Wikipedia valuable, um, helping people with their research. So sources on Wikipedia have a lot of pretty strict requirements about what types of sources are allowed. I won't go super into depth on those earlier. You can look, look up um, kind of the qualifications online through Wikipedia of what are the approved types of sources that um, are allowed to go through in an article. Um, but one thing that you can do is to visit existing articles and just check the sources that they have, which here's a screenshot of an article where you can see down at the bottom um, is like the overall list of references. And what you can do is just you can click on those, kind of see like, are these up to date? Are these like problematic? Um, is this something that maybe shouldn't be used as a source? And you can just go in and edit them as you see fit, or you can just add to the talk page on the article and give a suggestion about like, hey, I think maybe this source should be changed. What do you guys think? And I'll talk more about the talk pages later. Um, it's basically a forum connected to every single Wikipedia article where folks can discuss issues amongst themselves as they're editing. Um, and of, of course, another thing you can do, in addition to evaluating existing courses, is to check um, what types of, of citations are lacking from an article. 
and then just add them in. And so if you go to an article that's classified like as a stub, so that basically means um, an article that's really short, doesn't have a lot of information in it yet. Here at the bottom of the screen, you can see this article relating to education in the United States is a stub. You can help Wikipedia by expanding it. So basically that's just part of the classification with this, um, system on Wikipedia. So articles that are really short, don't have a lot of sources yet, um, could really use your help with updating those and expanding the sources available. All right, number four, um, writing responsibly. So the way that an article is written on Wikipedia is super important for the, the user that um, is going to be reading that because your tone, the type of information that you um, choose to highlight, the type of information you, you choose to not include in the article all play a major role in um, the types of voices that are being shared, the types of stories that are being shared on Wikipedia and um, the type of information that people can access. So one um, thing that you should pay attention to when working on Wikipedia pages, especially about living people, is how their identity is handled. So this includes information regarding race, gender, sexuality, disability, um, et cetera. This should all be done in a way that is not only respectful, but also safe for people who are still alive. Um, so like I mentioned before with um, LGBTQ plus identities, you really want to be mindful of the impact that disclosing something, some information about someone's identity could have on them, um, especially depending on like where they're living, what the society is like in certain places, um, how, how they'll be impacted like socially and publicly by the information that you put on Wikipedia, because oftentimes Wikipedia is like one of the first places that someone looks to find info about somebody. So um, it comes with a big responsibility of how to do it. And another thing that comes up is like, not only making sure that the information is accurate and respectful, but also making sure that it is situated at the right place in the article. So I don't know how many of you have noticed, like sometimes you might find something about somebody, like you might find out that they are a queer individual in right in their lead section. And with other people, it might be further down in their personal life section. And that has a lot to do with the person's um, life and their work. So for example, this artist, Nick Cave, um, he happens to be a, a gay individual. That's how he identifies. Um, however, that is not central to the, his work as an artist. And so that information is not disclosed in the lead paragraph about him. That's reserved later down in his personal life section. Um, for another type of person who maybe makes work about their experience as a queer individual or makes work about their experience as a black individual or as a, a refugee or as a disabled person, um, if that is a, a core part of who they are and they are open about that in public, um, they do a lot of work on that topic, that would be appropriate to put up in their, their lead paragraph. Okay, so we're on to our last um, topic, which is creating new pages. And obviously this is a huge part of what people do on Wikipedia is make articles um, and constantly expand the collection of information that is available on Wikipedia. Um, so I'm just sticking to the two easiest ways to get into this because creating a new article can be intimidating. However, it can be really easy as well. So the first tip I wanna share with you is just to make a stub. And this is what I mentioned earlier when you have at the bottom a little uh, note that says this article is classified as a stub and you can help Wikipedia by expanding it. So stubs are just another word for a really short article that just has the kind of the bare minimum of what people expect to see there, the bare bones of information, um, maybe just a couple of good sources and it's like a starting point for an article. And it's really important for stubs to be created because as soon as a stub is made, other Wikipedians can find it and just jump on there and add information. So really you can just make a stub about something and that will catalyze this whole process of, of fleshing it out and adding more information and making it into a really thorough, well-polished Wikipedia article. 
you don't have to create a whole nice, like super thorough article from scratch, just make the basics, get that published, and then other people can add onto it and that will just help to boost that process happening. Um, if you don't have time to make a sub or create a whole article from scratch, something super duper easy you can do is something that Wikipedians affectionately call red linking, which isn't a technical term, but it's just kind of something that you do when you want to tell other Wikipedia editors that some page needs to be created. So in this page, um, you have an example of, you have your classic blue text, which shows this leads to another Wikipedia page. You can click on that and it'll follow right through. But you notice there's a couple instances where the text is actually red. And that means that a page does not yet exist. If you click on that, it will pop up with a little notice that this page doesn't exist yet. Um, you can help Wikipedia by adding it. And so something super easy you can do is go into people's pages or go onto pages of topics and issues that you really care about and see where this needs to be expanded, what is lacking. And you can simply go in edit mode on Wikipedia, highlight whatever text and color it red, and that will show other Wikipedians that um, if, even if you don't have time to create the article yourself, other people will have that be more noticeable to them so they can go and contribute to that as well. Okay, so we've kind of gone through five um, easy ways that you can contribute to Wikipedia. It might be a lot of content to take in, it might be a little bit overwhelming, but I just like to share a couple of resources with you to help you get started into your journey of becoming a Wikipedian. So one of the basic, you know, overall things that you, you can do is utilize the trainings that are available through Wikipedia itself. Um, they have a ton of materials that are all free just on Wikipedia. If you Google something like how to edit Wikipedia or Wikipedia editing training, um, all these types of resources will come up. There's video tutorials. There's kind of activities that can walk you through step by step of what to do. Um, there's just pages upon pages of information where you can get your questions answered and hopefully that will help you get started. You can also do what I did and register for a more formally structured editing course. I took one through WikiEDU, which this little picture down here below um, shows their kind of um, course image. So there's one catered to different types of groups. Um, this course that I took was specifically um, dedicated to expanding coverage for um, queer folks on Wikipedia. So you didn't have to be a member of the LGBTQ community to join the course, but um, they definitely welcome people to do that so that it would be something that you're really interested in. Um, and there's many more courses that are offered through them and through other organizations um, as well. And I think um, Casey has been sharing some of those in the chat. Yes, awesome. There's lots of training links in there. So make sure you visit the chat and check some of those out as well. All right, another resource I want to share is these discussion forums that exist on Wikipedia. And there's more of these. I just am choosing to highlight two for the sake of time. Um, Wikipedia Tea House is basically like Reddit, but for Wikipedia. Um, I don't know how many of you use Reddit. I think it's awesome because I can just go on there and ask a question and immediately, like all these experts will just be like, here's what you need to know. And I think it's awesome. So this is kind of like the same thing for Wikipedia. You can ask questions on there and get them answered directly, or you can just scroll through like all these frequently asked questions, the kind of main topics that are commonly discussed. Um, it has like a, a really ex extensive archive of information. So I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're interested in becoming a Wikipedia editor. Talk pages, I mentioned this briefly earlier, um, are basically um, the other side of any article on Wikipedia. So here below this image on the right, um, you can see just in the corner, there's two tabs on the upper left-hand corner, one that says article and one that says talk. So anyone can go onto Wikipedia and switch to the talk tab of the page. You don't even have to be signed into your Wikipedia account. Anyone can see this. 
Um, but you basically just switch to that page and here you can, you can scroll down and see all the conversations that have happened among Wikipedia editors about the page itself, where they're trying to figure out, oh, I can't find a source on this, can somebody help me? Or I think you should change the tone of what you're saying here. Or what do you think about, you know, the way that this is covered? And so this is a really good resource for, especially if you're working on your own article or if you're trying to contribute to another one, um, just jump on those talk pages ask questions, um, provide answers to people. Those are great resources. Okay, wiki projects. This is another big one um, to look into. So wiki projects are these large scale movements. Um, they're collaborative, they're organized by people on Wikipedia. And there's a ton of them. There's ones for like any interest you can think of. Um, I've chosen to highlight these two examples. These are some the major ones that are happening. Um, this wiki project, African Diaspora, and the wiki project, LGBT Studies. Um, and they have these pages about them where you can go and see what types of projects they're working on, what their goals are, what tasks they need help doing. And you can join, you can join any project you want. You can join multiple projects and just help, help them out in any ways that you can. Um, and that's a super good way to get involved with kind of some of the activism that's happening on Wikipedia and the efforts that are being taken to make it um, a better place for its users. All right, so we're going to close out really soon. I want to be mindful of your time. Um, thank you for staying with us for, for such a long time. Um, but here's some recommended reading. Um, you can just refer back to these if you want on the recording or just take a screenshot if you want. Um, these are three resources. There's plenty more out there, but these are three that I just wanted to share with you about, um, about the types of work that's happening in Wikipedia, especially regarding like social justice. Um, so those are the readings that I, I would recommend. And I'd be really grateful if you ever find like cool resources on uh, making Wikipedia more accessible or decolonizing Wikipedia, et cetera. Um, send those my way, I would love, I would love to read more about that. All right, thank you so much for bearing with us today. Um, this took longer than I thought it would be. I get so excited about stuff like this. Um, so at this point, um, if you're still with us, if you have any remaining questions or if you're curious about anything, um, feel free to pop in the chat or um, turn on your mic. Or if you're just ready to head out. If you have other classes to get to, you're welcome to do that as well. Thank you so much for joining us. That was super fantastic, Eliza. Thank you so much for doing that. I learned so much and I feel like I've done trainings on this before, but never quite as accessible as what you've done for us today. It really inspires me to um, get started doing a few little things on Wikipedia and make an impact. So um, we do have one question. Will the links be included um, on the YouTube? Uh, yes, I will include, this is going to be posted on the library YouTube. I'll send it out to all the people who have registered. And um, in the description, I will uh, make sure to include those links. That's a great suggestion. Thank you so much, Amina, for staying with us today. I really appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one.